Hi, I'm Brent. We've got a video update today on the difference between the range of Subaru engines from right back in the 1990s all the way up to current, which we are here now, 2000 and late 2016. And as you can see, we've got a bit of a backlog at the moment with engine rebuilds, and it's a fantastic opportunity to show the difference between the engines and their raw state before they go back into the car because they're covered by the inlet manifold, exhaust manifold, and you as the owner may not know the difference of what you're physically looking at and what we can do in this particular situation is actually show you. So let's start off uh, the early days where we're talking about the EJ20 engine and this is one in front of me here. It's come out of a 99 2000 model STI which has got the forged pistons, two litre engine and what you're seeing here is the, is the block itself without the heads because the heads are sitting on the bench here behind me and the inlet manifold of another engine, not this particular one, is actually in the middle of being rebuilt here. But sitting behind me here is the, um, the later model STI, which you can tell quite easily because it's got the lumps on the front of the timing belt, uh, timing covers for the variable cam control. And this particular engine is the EJ25, which you can tell because it's got the EJ25 on the block. And this particular engine is obviously 2.5 litre as opposed to 2 litre. This particular engine here, which is the STI version of an engine similar to that one behind me, but now having been rebuilt with um, had a birthday on the on the pistons and rods and and um, block as well as the heads. This is the two liter STI engine. But really interestingly, we've we've gone out of our way to, to do a sub assembly here at the back. This is the FA series engine, and you can see just how big a difference Subaru has come with the way the variable cam control works. Of course, this is the two liter engine. The um, birth the heads that have already had a birthday to get it rebuilt and the bottom end block, which you can get depending on whether it is a, a normally aspirated or a turbocharged. And again, on the block here, FA20, which is the new deriv derivative of the replacement of the EJ series engine. And the thing to keep in mind, effectively Subaru are fairly consistent these days with the two liter and the 2.5s. The castings in a lot of ways are very, very similar, but they ball them out for the engine capacity. So of course, what you will see on an engine like this, which is the pistons and the cylinder ball and the water jacket in here and the outside of the casting, is when they cast the block, effectively they bore this out bigger for the bigger size pistons for the 2.5. So this thickness here of the water jacket to the cylinder ball gets thinner. So on a two liter engine, this is actually thicker than it is on a 2.5. But what I wanted to show you just to look out for here, this engine hasn't been exactly well looked after because what you can see in here is actually the uh, rust that has built up over many years of neglect inside the engine. This engine actually has now done a uh, big end bearing for other reasons and it's not in a very good state of mind and this particular owner is probably going to go for a replacement 2 litre engine which when it's finished will look like this and this is the EJ207 block which is being a, having a 7 on the end of the number means it's an STI and in this particular year when this 2 litre came out it is a proper forged piston engine, two litre of which we then use the original factory heads, which similar to those ones there, after they've been given a birthday. Now the thing to remember between an EJ207 and EJ257, the 25 means it's 2.5 litre, the 20 means it's two litre, but when you're talking about the seven, it's an STI engine, but when you're talking the 2.5 litre STI engine, EJ257, they don't have what we typically in the aftermarket industry call true forged pistons. They don't have the same durability in the pistons on this EJ257 as what you have in the EJ207. Um, they are a hyper-eutectic piston as opposed to a fully forged piston. Um, they are a little bit more, they are a lot more susceptible to engine knock. They can break easily. They're a very brittle piston. They take a lot of load, but typically over time, it is not something that you would want to take a reliance on if you're going to build a big horsepower engine. So in actual fact, in this particular engine, which has been modified by us, it was in a very, very sore state when it came in out of the uh, newer model STI. Um, the customer had driven it excessively with a big end bearing and just destroyed the inside of the engine. So he opted for a brand new block of which we took out pistons, the crank, the con rods, all the bearings, replaced the pistons and rods with an aftermarket heavy duty uh, forged rod and a good quality aftermarket forged piston. So when we put this engine back together, we can lean on it a little bit harder than what you could from a performance point of view than with the original 
factory fitted hyper detected pistons. And of course, as we're learning over the years now with the FA series engines, the normally aspirated 2.5 or the normally aspirated 2 litre or the turbocharged 2 litre with the direct injection technology, these engines are also starting to come, become a very, very worthwhile engine from a performance point of view. And in fact, um, in our road car, our BRZ, which has got the derivative of the 2 litre FA20 engine, it's the oldest BRZ in Australia, and it's um, done incredibly well with the modifications we've done, and our new R&D vehicle, which is also one of the oldest WRXs in Australia, it's also done incredibly well with the performance you can expect out of that as well. And of course, the big difference that Subaru has done in all of these changes is these three engines here, as you can see here, we've prepared it for you, the turbo now sits up top, so same with the earlier model STIs, turbo would sit here. When this one goes back together, you can see we haven't put the turbo back in place on this one. You can see the up pipe. On the early model, uh, 01, 02 models, they had a catalytic converter in this, and this turbo will sit in place. The FA series engines, all the turbo now sits down underneath here to reduce the runner length on the exhaust manifold for improved efficiency in the exhaust manifold to turbo length to try and bring the car on boost earlier. And this particular engine comes with in the WRX um, range of current model MY15 onwards with a twin scroll turbo and that brings a car on boost a lot earlier. Incredibly good turbo package matched with that car. Very, very hard to improve upon it. Whereas these engines, starting back in the early 1990s, um, have a whole range of turbos from um, VF22, VF24, um, VF28, VF30, 34, 35. The only twin scroll turbo engine that was sold in Australia was the two litre Liberty or the Legacy overseas, which came out after the B4 twin turbo around 2003, 2006. And that had a two litre twin scroll turbo with forged pistons. Very, very good engine, but unfortunately the twin scroll turbo was very, very small. So unfortunately in that application, they are not exactly a healthy modification to do a performance upgrade when it comes to pushing more boost. But if you do a conversion on them, again, they're a fantastic car. So there you have it. The difference in the range of the Subaru engines, whole heap of different options. As you can see, we do a lot of engine rebuilds here as well. So if you want some more technical information, have a look at our new website. You can do a search in the search command for a whole range of different keywords. But of course, you can download the power kit documents which come with all of our factory warranty guarantee. The big thing with all of our engine rebuilds, we give lifetime warranty in all our engines. So if you own this engine in five or 10 years time and it generates an oil leak, we'll cover it under warranty. Of course, we build the engines if it's a modified engine to the specification of what you choose at the time and you can spend anywhere between five grand and upwards on a good quality engine rebuild. And again, on that topic, we'll talk about that later because there's a whole range of different options when you come to doing modifications and improvements and rebuilds on these engines. But for today, that's enough. We'll talk about some more technical details later on in some other videos. Have a look at the bottom of this video. You can, um, I'll take a whole heap of pictures so you can have a look at these engines closely. But you can follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter and Instagram. Check out our new website and try out some of the search features. We'd love for you to give it a try. And no matter where you are in the world, I hope this information has helped you. But for today, I'm Britt Middleton. Thanks for watching.